Could you please a little bit uh, introduce yourself? Of course. Um, I am Esra Aygun. I am a freelance journalist. Um, my journalism experience goes back almost 18 years now. I've been covering the mainly the Cyprus problem, the negotiations, um, the efforts to solve the Cyprus problem since um, the 2000s. Um, and um, I covered the Annan plan period, Birgenstock negotiations, the referendum, and uh, I have been involved in the in the process since then. Um, I have worked in um, Istanbul at the beginning of my career, um, Associated Press, um, in uh, Associated Press's Istanbul office. Um, and then I came uh, to Cyprus where I have worked for a number of um, both Greek Cypriot and, and Turkish Cypriot media um, companies. Right now I'm freelance. Um, again, I am active on both sides of the island. Uh, trying to, you know, um, write for, for both media and reach as many people as um, I can to mainly raise awareness about um, the need for a solution in Cyprus, um, the, the need for a better Cyprus for, for everybody. Uh, actually, let's uh, continue with peace journalism uh, after this, and then we can come back to other subjects. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yes, please. Let's ask. What does peace journalism mean to you for the Cyprus context? Okay. Um, it's something we need uh, badly in Cyprus, and um, sadly, it it doesn't exist, or it, uh, only a couple of journalists are really um, trying to do it. Um, it is a taboo in Cyprus. Um, you are expected to. If you are a Turkish Cypriot journalist, you are expected to stick to the um, announcements, statements and the facts given to you by the Turkish Cypriot authorities. And if you are a Greek Cypriot journalist, you are expected to stick with the statements, the announcements, the facts of the Greek Cypriot authorities. And if you take that and try to cross-check it with the other side, it's a uh, you are being questioned. Your motives are be, are, are questioned. Um, nobody buys uh, the explanation that you want to be impartial. You want to cross-check your information, and most importantly, what jour peace journalism is is to. Um, put out both sides of the story, because every story has two sides. And um, nobody really understands that that is, in fact, what you're trying to do. They always look for an ulterior motive. Um, why would the explanation we gave you not be enough? What are you after? I am after giving two sides of the story. I am after giving or reflecting the thoughts and opinions and concerns and fears of both sides. Um, peace journalism is very often um, confused with censoring in Cyprus. They think that people who are trying to be, be peace journalists are censoring certain things to um, make a more flowery you know, a picture of the situation. It's wrong. It's a complete misconception. Peace journalism is not censoring. It's um, actually reflecting the two sides of every single story. Um, and, and this is what um, some of us are trying to do. And this is what more journalists should be doing in Cyprus. Because um, I believe that the two communities have been suffocated in their own truths for so long. They have um, established their, you know, own beliefs, rhetorics, mentalities, and the realities on the two sides of the island are completely different. It, it's like alternative realities on the two sides of the island. So let's let's create a common reality. Let's create a, a common understanding which includes the opinions of both sides. This is what we, what we need in Cyprus. Is it easier to uh, be a peace journalist, let's say, if you're a freelancer? Or, or for example, for someone who's working in a 
in a news agency co company. Mm -hmm. so how would I mean? How would this differ their attitude towards uh, their approach? Well, I think it would be e easier for a freelancer um, just because uh, you are you are independent and and you are the the only person you are responsible to. So um, it's it's easier. However, uh, we have some friends who are working for a company and who are still trying very hard to, you know, um, include uh, both sides of a story, both sides, opinions, feelings, fears, um, etc. However, um, of course, I mean, media ownership is a problem. Um, the uh, editorial line is a problem. So you, you do at some point uh, get limitations. You can hit a wall um, if you are part of a media company. Um, but again, I think every one of us, whether freelancer or working for a media company, should do our utmost to, to be able to, you know, break down some of those walls and make it a norm uh, for journalists to actually get information from both sides. It should be the norm. It should be what a journalist should be doing. Can I ask something? Uh, there is a situation here, there are some roadblocks. This is the situation in Cyprus, you will come move. What are the obstacles or what there should be a common, uh, let's say, media structure, like the unions, cooperation of the unions, the journalist communities on both sides, to cooperate in order for peace journalists, not just, but also better journalism. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, I think the biggest language to that is, uh, uh, b biggest obstacle to that, I'm sorry, is language. Um, uh, we are limited so much that we can only communicate between a fellow Cypriot uh, with a, a fellow Cypriot only if we know English. Um, and uh, this is a big limitation because there are some very good efforts out there. The two journalists unions right now, the Turkish Cypriot Journalists Union and the Cypriot Journalists Union, are, um, have come together. Um, and the OSC is, is supporting this effort uh, very much. They are trying to cooperate and put forward, you know, um, a common ethics standards, um, you know, list of ethics, common mem mem memorandum, you know, common goals. Uh, I, but again, people who can participate in that are, are people who know English, um, and which is one of the biggest crimes uh, we have committed in Cyprus, I think. We have created, or the authorities have created over the, 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 the um, last de decades, uh, two communities who don't speak each other's languages. Um, so I think this, this is the biggest uh, obstacle in front of every kind of cooperation because we do have efforts. I mean, we have on Facebook, we have a um, journalists in Cyprus group uh, where, you know, again, uh, Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot journalists um, ask each other questions. They say, guys, I heard something like this. Is it true? You know, so there is a, a, a movement towards that. But again, only limited to those who speak English. I want to ask something actually. Uh, <clears throat> the, um, as a peace journalist, you should be very objective. But it's very difficult to be objective because you have a standing point um, and it does affect by uh, your, your background and everything. How, how, this, how you can overcome this challenge? Or mm -hmm. What can you say about that? Yeah, well, I, I am very open about the fact that I am not objective when it comes to the Cyprus problem. I think remaining um, impartial to the Cyprus problem is, uh, is, is not something journalists or um, academicians or people out there, people who are, you know, appealing to the society, can afford right now because we are faced with a situation where we either create a better country or we continue a shameful situation. So being impartial in that in this case for me would be a crime. Um, I am partial. I am for the solution of the Cyprus problem and all my efforts um, are directed to that. However, I am trying to be as impartial as I can when it comes to the 
this, the community's um, pain, um, concerns, uh, fears, I try to understand both sides because I know that no pain is bigger than any other pain. Um, I know that no community's pain is bigger than the others. I know that people hurt the same way. Um, and I think being able to reflect that and um, be, being able to uh, make people understand that you cannot single out one community's desires um, views, goals, and say this is legitimate, but the other sides are not. No, they are equally legitimate, they're equally relevant, and they equally should be put out there. And people, and, and we should be the ones helping everybody on both sides to understand that both sides' fears are legitimate, they are equally, you know, relevant, and should be taken into consideration, both sides' desires, um, both sides' histories. Um, this is what we should be impartial in, but, but not the Cyprus problem. So peace journalism is a good tool for that, uh, to make each community to actually feel, uh, not only for themselves, yeah. but for the... Yeah, to, to be heard and to hear. That's role of peace journalism. Yes, yeah, I would say so. Uh, beyond peace journalism, I think it's included. I see in your work as uh, and your action as a citizen, and as your standpoint that you involve the community a lot. I mean, you're very social, you ask for opinions, and you take a step further, and you're working with a civil society and the community to achieve action. Uh, would you like to comment on that? Explain us how does you involving the people helps you in your work, mm -hmm. in your profession? Mm -hmm. um, it motivates me because when I speak with people, um, when I when I hear them, when I listen to them, um, first of all, it as a journalist, it helps my profession because. I understand people better, I understand their viewpoints, where they're coming from, and it, it reflects on my work, but it also motivates me in what I'm trying to do. Um, coming to being active, I think I couldn't be any other way. I am either not going to live in Cyprus or I am going to do everything I can in, in you know, within, within possibilities to, to change something. Um, I cannot just... Uh, put out a couple of news stories and sit back and, and you know, watch what happens. I, I want to um, be able to do whatever I can to maybe create the smallest change, which, is, which goes a long way maybe in the long run. What is the equation of uh, the citizens being involved in the media landscape? What is their place in the equation of the media landscape in Cyprus? Very little, um, very little. I don't think... Um, the media gives voice to the citizens, um, peace activists, if we were talking about them, or NGOs, you know, by communal work. I don't think they have enough voice in the media, and I think every one of us should, you know, um, feel responsible to, ha to, to include them more, because uh, journalism in Cyprus, unfortunately, is more like a a PR business. Um, we we get newspapers full of statements from officials. It's like a, a bulletin put out there by the presidential office, by the government, by this ministry, that ministry. It should not be that. We are not PR people. We are not public relations officers. We are journalists. And journalists have the access to people too, not only, you know, um, authorities or officials. So we should try to, not try to, I, it should be our duty to, to balance it, not just put out the official statements, but what the people are, are demanding, what they are thinking, what they are feeling, and what is it, what is in it for them. For example, the, the agenda now, or the topic now, is the presidential elections. That's the president's agenda, or his, you know, what, what is the agenda of the people? I don't think they go to bed thinking about the presidential elections and wake up thinking about that. What do they feel? What do they think? What is in, what is in it for them? 
this should be our, our effort to include that in what we write. Okay, what is the community, the citizen's role in getting their voice being heard or getting more in part of the media landscape equation? What can do about that? Um, yeah, it's 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 true that the civil society in Cyprus should be more active. Um, there is a, again, I am talking in relation to the Cyprus problem because that's what I know best. So it's not a please don't take it as a general comment about any kind of you know civil society, but especially in the Cyprus problem, um, I think there is a false feeling or conviction in this Cypriot society, both sides, that no matter what we do, nothing is going to change and it's not up to us to change anything and it's very wrong. I think we have to believe in ourselves, believe that yes, maybe, you know, today it's 20 people saying it, but tomorrow you can grow this to 200 and then to thousands. We should feel that power in us. The civil society should believe in their power as people. Um, I think we have somehow lost this in Cyprus. Turkish Cypriot had this in the beginning of 2000s. They have lost it too. Um, we have um, drawn back. We have gone back into our own, you know, um, little shells. But I think we should we should start coming out again and, and really believe in the difference we can make um, as civil society. What about the, the, the reflection of the media of of the of the life. I mean, uh, to me, it's always uh, media is always drawing a very dark, very pessimistic picture all around the world, not only for Cyprus. But it's uh, how actually media reflect to us. All, all, always the the doom day. Yeah. Uh, why do you think it is like this? Um, what can be the alternative for that? Yeah. Well, bad news sells. Um, it's always the case. Look at, I mean, um, an, a, a news report about an accident, about uh, an, an attack, about something ugly. It's always the, the most popular news uh, story on an internet site. Um, I think, again, this is um, something that journalists themselves should, you know, should feel a, a duty to also <clears throat> write about a story that maybe will not be read as, as, as widely, but can make a big difference among the people who read, you know. Um, again, it should be an individual effort or um, effort of a, of a media company. Um, so yes, we, we will never be able to um, stop the negative news being so popular and being circulated so much. But at least we can try to balance it with, with other good stories, beautiful stories. Um, and one thing about, you know, the picture the media draws, um, it really surprises me when you look in, in Cyprus at the media, you have Turkish Cypriot journalists who write about Greek Cypriots or the Greek Cypriot side who have never crossed to the Greek Cypriot side. And, it, and this is the, ca the case for the Greek Cypriot journalists too. I mean, I know some journalists in the biggest newspaper in the South who write about the North and the Turkish Cypriots on a daily basis. And he, that person has never crossed to the to the north. I don't know if he has ever met a Turkish Cypriot in his life. We have to expose these things and we have to, you know, um, voice that this is not right. If you're going to write about a Turkish Cypriot or a Greek Cypriot, at least you should have the decency to meet a couple and to talk to them and to, to know how they feel. Um, so I think it is also a matter of raising the awareness of the audience too. Um, who are they reading? Do they know uh, the agenda of the person they are reading? Which newspaper are they buying? Do they question the editorial line of the newspaper they are buying or the TV channel that they are watching? I think there is a big um, awareness um, raising job that has to be done too. Because the, the quality um, demand should also come from the audience so that we can improve as the journalism sector, as the media sector. Because media sector has its own links and some, some limitations. Yes, business links, interests, 
political interests, yes, and um, people should be more aware of that too. Yeah, and that's why they should be more demanding. Exactly. How, okay. Be, people being aware demands uh, access to information. You have recently have seen you are involved in a CDS initiative for unfair treatment and abuse of uh, of a citizen based on what language they have, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think citizens, first of all, are able to have access to information or to be better informed in Cyprus mm -hmm. in order to make a, a better media literacy? Mm -hmm. Do you think people have access to information in Cyprus? No, I think we are very weak in that terms. I think um, we lag a lot uh, b behind uh, many modern countries. Okay, um, I, it, the Turkish Cypriot side is a, is a complete different case, but even in the Greek Cypriot side, in the Cyprus Republic, which is an EU country, a democratic EU country, or should be one, I think access to information is very limited. Um, I think many things, especially related to equal treatment, um, to fairness of, you know, the, 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 um, government institutions towards the, uh, the citizens um, is, is very weak um, and, uh, and this is not out in the open. Um, access to such information of, of unfair treatment is, is blocked, um, is uh, hidden, is censored. So I think um, there should be more people um, questioning what's going on um, at government uh, offices, at you know um, public institutions, um, we should be questioning this more and questioning whether, you know, what what kind of treatment is going on and if it is fair and if it is not, why it is not fair and we should we should try to expose um, such behavior, such treatment, so that we can challenge the establishments. Um, in the north, um, I don't have to say, um, there, it, there is a military rule, there is an occupation, um, and uh, of course access to information is limited, access to places is limited. Um, as a journalist, I cannot walk into Varosha today and make a, a news story. Um, there are many um, areas and many subjects that is untouchable um, and again um, we should challenge those too um, so on both sides of the island there are a lot of problems about this have you ever tried to access I mean your personal <coughs> experiences what was the process and did you manage it then? No, I haven't. Um, I have had applications in the past to go into Varosha, but it has been declined. Um, and, and, and I say this, you know, every opportunity I get. But we, maybe if they get hundreds of demands from journalists, maybe that, that will build a pressure on them, you know? So this is, this is what um, we should also be doing. Um, Keep, keep asking and keep challenging and keep questioning.